United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I just kind of want to talk about two pages. I talked to Mrs. Circle about this just so everybody's – we're all on the same page and kind of thinking the same way. Uh, I mentioned this at the, the last hearing we had. This is probably the cleanest, most grammatically correct contract we've had. So a lot of time was spent through that. So there should not be any – this contract that's written is about as perfectly as what a group of individuals could write it, okay? As far as changes to language, uh, there wasn't really uh, that much language put into it just because you usually ask for a lot of language when there was no money and the last contract we had, we got all the language we wanted, I mean, to be honest with you. But if you look on page eight, uh, when it talks about personal leave, um, section uh, A, uh, it says, I'm sorry, Section B, B, the third paragraph, talks about uh, the days before fall and, you know, after fall, winter, holiday, spring breaks. They're double days now. I think everybody's aware of that, but I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with that. That was the biggest change in language, okay? And then if you turn back to page 18, uh, this is where it talks about uh, compensation, and uh, <clears throat> this is where there was a lot of ambiguity and some vagueness, and it caused some problems, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to clean all that up, because at one time we had 36 steps on our salary schedule. Well, that's that's not good, and that started 12 years ago. Uh, we had, a, you know, probably 10, 12 years ago. We had a person brought in at the 15 years of teaching experience that had never taught a day. And so think anomalies like that happening, they're not going to happen anymore with the way that this contract is written. There were a couple of charts that were confusing in the last contract. All that language is gone. So if you look, uh, it gives you the salary range. Okay, it talks about... Um, all the contributions that the school makes. You go on down, it talks about, uh, we've got the redistribution statement, and here, newly hired compensation. And this is where we really kind of ran into some more anomalies. Uh, we had uh, principals offering salaries to teachers, and we didn't really feel like that was a phys physically responsible thing to do because the principals had nothing to do with negotiating this contract. If you go down and look through that, we have a superintendent and it's bold faced. So if a superintendent, if, a, if we, let's say, I wanna come here and work at Delphi next year, and I've taught some other place, I've got a master's degree, I've taught five or 10 years, that Mrs. Circle or the superintendent, the principal will go to that, and they'll sit down with Mrs. Circle, Mrs. Circle will say, okay, this is the amount of money that person gets. So the money comes from the superintendent. It's not going to be an offer from the principal because we had that happen a couple times, and that really caused some major issues. And we think that will be a lot helpful. If you also, it talks about, it says, too, that if we have a hard-to-fill position, uh, it talks about meaningful discussion. Uh, that's really important. So what does meaningful discussion mean? Um, well, it means if uh, I like a physics teacher, 
and Mrs. Circle says, hey, we really need a physics teacher. We're going to offer this, but because of that, we can, we can give them a little extra money. Then she'll sit down and we'll talk with the association and have a meaningful discussion. You know, it might be a half an hour, it might be 45 minutes, but we're going to talk about it. And then even if, I guess, if we were to disagree with Mrs. Circle, then we would probably send an email to the board and say, hey, this is what Mrs. Circle thinks or the superintendent thinks. This is what the association thinks. But at least we discussed it, and then you guys can make your decision. Because what's happened in the past, we had, some, uh, we had a teacher get offered uh, a sum of money, and it was not a hard-to-fill position. And the superintendent in the past was questioning, why would you do that? And that person said, because I can't. Well, that's not good. Because what we don't want to have happen is anybody that's already here get passed up by somebody that's coming in. Did I say that correctly, Mrs. Circle? Because that causes huge morale issues. So the language is all in here to take care of that. If you go ahead and you turn the page, if you look, there are no more years. That caused, <coughs> in last, the last contract we had, those the numbers we had numbers and letters and those numbers caused nothing but problems because people were looking at them as years experience and under the compensation model from the state you can't base things on years experience it's all based on evaluations it, it's basically the same thing but i think it's just a matter of semantics so if uh, if i were to come in here let's say next year to teach elementary school and I taught at Bluffton, the circle would look at my salary. She would look at where it fit on this grid because with some of the people that we had brought in, they didn't fit on the grid. So we will move them into the grid and they will slide on the grid. And once they're there, they'll just progress up the grid. So I really think it will make it easier for budgeting. Uh, I think it will be fair to the more more fair and more equitable to the teachers that are already here. Um, I think for a, a, a person wanting to come to Delphi, they can look and see how their salary is going to progress. Um, and, and I think it will help with, with teacher retention. But there was just so much ambiguity in the other contract that we, I really think we did a great job of, of working uh, to clean that up. And then if you'll also notice, this salary, just like the old salary schedule, but this isn't a schedule, it's a grid, uh, it tops out. So the only way that for someone to get more money once they top out is if you add a percentage to the grid. Like it used to be when we had the salary schedule <coughs> and these $1,200 amounts would be like an increment. So you could say, okay, we're gonna keep that increment, we're gonna keep that yearly raise, but everybody's gonna get a 2% raise. So then if you're at the top of the scale, you would get 2% added to your top. Otherwise, once you're there at the top, just like the old salary schedule that Mr. Priest and I remember, uh, you're, you're done. Okay. So I think those are probably the most important things that we needed to be aware of. One is the change in the days on the personal days, and then the, how we cleaned up um, the salaries and new people coming in. Did I leave anything out, Mrs. Circle? No. Other than the personal days are around vacation. Yeah, I'm around vacation, yeah. That was on page eight. So it's a double day. So if I were to take, if I were to take uh, under this new contract, if I were to take personal day for the, the big breaks, uh, it's going to count as two days. And I think that's something that the board wanted and we were willing to agree to. And, and I know. We talked about this too at a discussion meeting that people will look and say, well, these other corporations are doing this, these other corporations are doing that. It's like looking at someone's house. There's always going to be someone that's got a better house, but there's always going to be someone that has a worse house. There's always going to be someone with a better car. There's always going to be someone that has a worse car. But this is the most equitable thing that we could do for Delphi. And we could have asked for the moon, and you guys could have given us the moon, and then you know what? In a year or two or six months, we're going to have a riff. So we think that this was the, the best thing in the interest of the employees, for the kids, and the sustainability of the corporation. 
because there's only so much water in the pool and you have to leave water in for everybody or it's not safe to dive in, it's not safe to swim in. So I want to thank the board and thank Mrs. Circle for their work on the contract. Uh, I think you guys did a really great job. It was, it was just a, it was a pleasure to go through the numbers and, and the numbers are accurate. So when you get next year, when you start hiring new teachers and you see that teacher, you see that position and you see that amount, you know that it's a fair amount that it fits into the grid. If it's a high demand position that the association and the superintendent have talked about it and that no existing employee is going to be passed up by a new hire with the same, for the same experience in education. So that's one two and a half minutes, but that's the contract. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure working with Mrs. Circle and the two board members. It really was. It, it always is. It's, I think everybody was we were pretty much on the same page. of teacher contract for 2021-2022. You guys have a copy of the contract. I will state that I will have no uh, opinion or option on any of this. Uh, I will not be taking a vote, uh, but uh, I need a motion to the uh, contract uh, or the ratification of the teacher contract for 2021-2023. This is a two-year uh, agreement. I move to ratify for the ratification of the teacher contract for the 2021 through 2022 2023 school year. Second. Besides the two items that Mr. Connor shared, uh, were there any other language changes that did not get highlighted in the contract from uh -huh. the prior contract? No, other than we fixed a lot of grammar. Yeah. Yeah. A Much lot of grammar, yeah. spelling, punctuation. I, there were several things that were struck, yeah. but yeah, nothing added. No, no major content changes. Uh, no. Thank you. I just want to say that I felt like it, it went rather smoothly. As Tim mentioned, um, they can ask for a lot of things, um, but doing that just it just makes it tough to to move forward. And I think you, I think both sides will be happy with at least a schedule and an agreement to hopefully sustain and continue to grow and keep teachers and, and bring them in. I've been involved in a lot of teacher negotiation contracts over the years. I think this went down smooth working with him and getting involved. It was a pleasure working with the Constitution Association. I'd just like to add, uh, I'd like to thank Mike and Zach and Tim and uh, the DCTA and Mrs. Circle for their work in bringing this contract together. And uh, I think that this new schedule will really help with our teacher situation. And then we find that I don't think there'll be any animosity. I think there'll be a lot more unity in the school once everybody has a chance to take a look at this. I appreciate it. 
You just, pardon me, you just can't call it a schedule. It's a grid. I know it looks like a schedule, but we got to call it a grid. Okay. <laughs> it's the same thing. Team matters uh, A, uh, B. Well, we have employment classified staff there, as you can see. Uh, resignations, as you see there, and an employment of uh, homebound instructor. Um, we get a motion on that, and I'm sure there might be a question on C. Uh, we move we accept routine matters A through C. Second, uh, any questions on the routine matters? Mrs. Sirk, will you uh, explain to me the employment uh, of uh, the homebound instructor? Uh, we have a student that's going to be out for approximately six to eight weeks. Um, she needs to have instruction. say aye.
first date it is that we apply to, but it's coming up here the very first week of November, basically first or second week. And I, what I'll do is I'll send out to who wants to attend that. Uh, since the trails is closed down, uh, I think we could have maybe Coker Bowl. So uh, I'll find out for sure. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Connor. So do you have a copy for us to sign? Copies for the contracts. Yes. You and I Okay, that's all right.